it started life as an, an amazing novel. It's mm -hmm. it's by this a Swedish writer, John Linkvist, and um, um, which was out about seven years ago. And then the brilliant Swedish film director Thomas Alfredson made it into a film, um, which I saw um, probably about six, six years ago, um, and um, absolutely loved it. And it's the story. It's the story of two kind of teenagers, 14, 15 year olds who meet um, in, the, they, they both live in the same housing estate in a suburb of Stockholm, like a, a kind of new town. And, um, and they meet and he's bullied and she's just recently moved into the, to the estate. And um, it's quite good music for- It's quite spooky, story, isn't, isn't it? it? I know, it's great. Um, and, um, and, and they meet and, and she kind of befriends him and she, she helps him with his bullying. Um, and they kind of, they, they, they fall in love with each other, and apart from the fact that she's a vampire. That kind so of makes a bit it of a quite twist special, there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> which we discover, um, and that she's got a guardian and they've been moving around the kind of country, because every time you know, she gets close to being caught, they have to move on. So, so from the film, it's not, an, it's not a kind of film you see and you think this will work brilliantly on stage. It required a bit of imagination. What yeah. was it about it that you loved so much and you thought this will really work on stage? Um, well, I, I, I loved that central relationship and I thought um, there'd be quite beautiful scenes. They're all set around a climbing frame, a jungle gym it's called, um, in, in, in the centre of this kind of uh, estate of houses. And, um, and I thought they could be quite beautiful in quite a Beckettian way. Um, I also um, loved the challenge of, 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 of finding a physicality for, for a vampire on stage and, and looking at the vampire kill itself, which, uh, which we have a, a few of. And, um, I, worked, I work a lot with a, a director and choreographer called Stephen Hoggart, who I actually went to school with from the same town in Yorkshire. And for people who might have seen Curious Incident and Once, he worked on those as well, hasn't yeah. he? So yeah. quite a unique style of movement. Absolutely. Um, and um, and, and I, I was really excited to work with Stephen to find a, to find a language for vamp a kind of physical language for a vampire. Um, and, and, and so there's that kind of central relationship between the two of them and then you get the sense of the townsfolk and how they're being affected by these kills that are happening um, and, and 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 so the, the kind of tension between those I thought was really exciting and the story is quite oh, and blood and blood obviously how do you do the blood on stage what is it really it's blood <laughs> <laughs> it's stage blood and what is that everyone thinks it's like corn syrup is that what it yeah, yeah. okay it's quite it's very sweet because you get it in your mouth Right. Brief encounter with fangs is what I call it. Okay. And as you say, it's a, it's a really stunning love story. It's centre. How important was it to find the right people to play Eli and Oscar? Really important because because although they're kind of young characters, um, the, the materials can be quite adult because as, as, as you learn more about her relationship with her guardian. Mm. Um, and, um, and, and, and so you, you couldn't do it with actors that age, also p putting actors that age. Um, on stage is, is always a risk just just for you know to get them to be consistent to get them to take on you know take charge of this material um, so um, we did a lot of auditioning Rebecca Benson um, is, is a trained actress but she, you know she's got the good fortune of looking about 12 <laughs> <laughs> she's not that big she's not that big and, um, and, and then Martin Martin Quinn um, I'd, I'd, I went to Scottish Youth Theatre when we were casting the show in Glasgow and said do you have any young stars and, and Martin was 17 at the time and, um, and from Paisley and, and, and now he's moved down here and what's lovely is you know he, he came down with the show at the Royal Court and he, he leads the show in the West End the two of them do incredibly maturely they're amazing actors and then he's going to go off to drama school Brilliant. Yeah. And when I saw it, one of the things that was so amazing about it is how it can move from being this incredibly beautiful romantic moment to being something incredibly savage in literally a split second. Was that something that was a challenge for you to do? Or was that important for you? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, the, you know, kind of that love and, and, and pain and, and, and danger are often kind of very close to each other. So we, we liked the idea that, you know, you, you got this quite, quite, it's quite a gentle kind of rhythm to start with and you, you meet all these characters and you, and you see the lives going on and then suddenly you, you realise that there's a, there's a vampire in their midst and, and, and um, I mean it's not so much a challenge as just really exciting. Mm. And were there any challenges of, of putting uh, the vampire side of the story on stage? Did you instantly know how you wanted that to work? I knew that 
uh, we, 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 I wanted to choose about three or four moments and really, really go to town with them. So there's an amazing special effects designer called Jeremy Chernick, who, um, who he's based in Brooklyn. And Stephen Hoggett had said that Jeremy was brilliant with, um, with kind of spray of blood and things like that. So we got him, we got him over to work on the first production. And there's a lot of good blood effects in the show. And when you're watching it, some of it actually looks quite dangerous. I presume that you never do actually put the actors in danger, but there's bits as an audience member where you really feel like, oh my goodness, are they actually in trouble? Um, I mean, the, 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 I suppose the most challenging scene to stage was there's a kind of famous scene towards the end of the film, and the novel obviously, where um, he finds himself in a swimming pool with, 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 with the people that have been bullying him. and. Um, and one of their older brothers, and it's an incredibly nervous, horrible, dangerous situation for him. And they challenge him to a task whereby he has to, he has to hold his breath underwater for a long period of time. As, as an audience member, you hold your breath too. It's quite Well, so scary. does he. So, so there's a big, big swimming pool on stage full of water, and, and, and he gets kind of pushed underneath. So I had to make sure that Martin... Um, I had to make sure that Martin kind of was comfortable doing that, so uh, I got him both a lifeguard and I sent him to scuba diving lessons as well, so that he got really, really used to um, kind of holding his you know, breath underwater and, and just being underwater and having his eyes open underwater and everything. But of course, it's totally safe. And, I too hard, it's <laughs> and the story is about teenagers. Are you, were you hoping that teenagers would come and see the show? Is that your target audience? Um, and my target audience is everybody because I think there's, um, I think there's, I think I think it's a story that any, anyone can connect with. But I do love the fact that young people are, you know, the, the audience at the Apollo um, is very very young, you know, well, certainly relative to a lot of um, of, of other, other shows. And, and and I'm really really proud of that that that, that those audiences, uh, you know, that 18 to 30 kind of um, you know, audience is coming out. It's brilliant. It's really exciting. I think. Because the other person working on the creative team was Jack Fawn, who is brilliant about writing about teenagers. Yeah. Um, did you instantly think that you wanted him to do the script? Yeah, um, because Jack had worked on Skins, um, and also he worked with Shane Meadows on This Is England, and then this brilliant BBC Three series called The Fades. I knew that he would... Um, he, well, he's a self-confessed expert on uh, bullied, nerdy teenagers. <laughs> Um, and, and I knew he would connect with, with that central relationship between Oscar and Eli. I also knew that he'd really relish writing the kind of horror parts of it as well, the kind of the vampire scary parts of it, and, and he, he, he really did. So would you classify it as a horror show? Um, I'd classify it as a... No, it's not a horror show, but it, it, it's, um, it, it's an incredibly powerful kind of romance where one of that characters <laughs> yeah, happens happen to be a to vampire. Be a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> but we are fascinated by vampires, especially in the last five years. It's just people apps are really, really fascinated by them. Why do you think yeah. that is? Um, I, th I think there's something quite attractive about them. They're very seductive. I mean, there's, you know, it's always involved in kind of, um, you know, some kind of uh, seduction. Um, that's where kind of vampires came from, um, you know, in literary um, history. And... Um, but also, I, I think people are uh, really, really intrigued by uh, that, that idea of immortality, you know. And in some ways, Let the Right One In is kind of Peter Pan in reverse, mm -hmm. where Eli is Peter, and I suppose Oscar is Wendy's daughter, Jane, and so uh, you get that kind of cycle happening. And, and there's something incredibly exciting. I mean, Peter Pan was always my favorite story when I was a, a wee boy, because, you know, the idea of, of someone coming in your window and, and whisking you away you know, flying across the sky as to a, to a land, some, you know, to Never Never Land was the scary, you know, the idea of someone coming in your window is terrifying and really exciting. You think it's the most exciting thing ever. And, and, it's, and, and so there's something about the, you know, the, the characters that never grow up and vampires are immortal. So there's an incredible sadness that I think at the heart of that because they don't age, they don't evolve. They, there's, they, they can't ever kind of break the cycle of it. Unless I suppose you get a stake through the heart or something like that, but we don't have any of that. <laughs> no stakes. And uh, you were talking before about Jack Fawn talking about bullying and being nerdy and all that kind of thing. And the vampire stuff in it is quite scary, but the bits that I found I wanted to shut my eyes in were the bits of kind of emotional cruelty and the teenage bullying. Was that really important to you that that really stands out? Yeah. Um, and and it's, it's interesting because audiences um, all along the way, and particularly at the Apollo, have said that they were surprised themselves that 
that they thought that they would be like look, watching through their fingers at the actual vampire killing moments, when actually watching the show, they found those quite natural, almost like a wildlife program or something, because that's just her. That's just who Eli is. It's, she has to feed. Whereas the, 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 the scenes they found really traumatic were the ones where Oscar gets bullied, because that's man-made. Mm. And it, you know, it's, it's a kind of relationship that we've that we've created really. So, um, so that was really interesting. So, so it's it's the bullying that people watch through their fingers. Mm. And for Rebecca playing Eli, um, she had her movements are quite animalistic. It must mm. have been quite a challenge for her. How did you go about rehearsing that side of it? Was that Stephen Hoggart? Yeah, yeah. Stephen and um, Stephen and Becky worked on that um, together and. I mean, how Stephen works is there's a lot of improvisation. So he, he will give he will give the cast tasks and say find find a physical way to um, you know to tell this part of the story or you know find a, find a way of you know crawling across the stage together in in, 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 in some exciting way and, um, and and so through that him and Rebecca developed that animalistic kind of you know choreography just what the idea is to be to have that strength because the, the thing about vampires is they've got a ridiculous super strength and at one point she uh she flattens <laughs> in more ways than one um a, a much bigger kind of over six foot tall actor on stage um and uh and and finishes him off it's quite impressive it's quite <laughs> that that's the scene where the whole audience jumps in fact, I have to, when I watch the show now, I, I saw it on Friday night, and I can't help but when that moment comes, because obviously I've seen it, uh, where you think he, he, he finds Eli in her, in her bed chamber, as it were, uh, which isn't a bed chamber at all, but uh, in that kind of class, it's, it, it's, our, it's our, her version of a coffin, and, and he thinks that she's dead. Um, so he kind of turns away for a moment, and then there's a... There's, there's a moment where, and I, I, you look at the audience, and there's one, they all go, zoom. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. In fact, we've, we've, we've filmed from the front. It's really perverse, isn't it? We've filmed the audience in that moment, and, and it's, like, it's like those um, trailers you get in the cinema, like yeah. paranormal activity, <laughs> <laughs> where the audience goes, <laughs> As a director, do you enjoy going to watch your shows, or do you just are you constantly looking at other people for their reaction? I really, I, I, as much as possible, I try and... I try and see it fresh because that's the only way you're useful to the actors because that's what the audience you know <clears throat> the audience tend to see the shows only once so um so, so as much as possible you do that and i don't often watch the audience watching the show because you can kind of feel them anyway mm. but that that is an exception it's it, it's it's just too it's too enjoyable <laughs> not to watch everybody it's horrible isn't it scaring everyone senseless and then enjoying it i should i should be locked up <laughs>